Good morning. Um, Laura Erickson with BlondeRunner.com uh, here. And it looks like we have a few people joining us. Um, I've had a problem with my chat not working. And I've been trying to figure this out, but I'm a blonde. So I have even got a tw tweet out to Alex, which is the guru of Periscope. So I'm hoping that I can see some of your chat. I do see when you join. So again, if we have a hard time chatting on this, please make sure you twit tweet me tweet me on Twitter at Blonde Runner so I can see those comments and uh, I do want this to be very interactive but I'm still figuring it out so um, please feel free to comment uh, on that as much as you can so uh, let me see some comments let's see if that's working is it is it telling you it's limited if so let me know I've really tried to fix that I don't know I haven't I haven't limited it I don't know how uh, how I can fix that but we'll wait for a few more people to join good Good, so you can comment. It looks like some people can comment. Hopefully it's not just limited to those that are following me. I'm not sure how to fix that. Thanks for the heart. Um, and I today I really wanted to talk about the value of rest and recovery. I just woke up from a great night's sleep. Um, and that's not always the case, but a lot of times uh, I think it's really valuable to get a course good rest. And we're not going to talk just about sleep. I really want this to be about how to speed up your recovery because with training, um, your recovery is really your limiter. Uh, if you're not recovering from workouts, obviously it'll affect your next workout. And so rest is definitely very valuable when it comes to, uh, and rest, not just sleep. We're talking allowing your body to have easy days. I think the misconception uh, with running and, and good runners is that you've got to push hard every single day. And this is not true. Uh, a, a story that I like to share in a lot of my running classes is um, I actually was recruited here, recruited to run in Utah uh, from Colorado. I'm from Colorado. I was recruited to run for the University of Utah on scholarship at first. I, I did actually complete my education at Utah State and I ran for them too. Um, but when I ran there, I ran with a good friend of mine, Julie, and um, we were the top runners at the university at the time. And we were good friends and we we're still good friends. Uh, we would often run our slow runs together. And what was kind of amazing to me, and this is even my freshman year in college, is that we would go really slow and chat and have a good time. And other everybody else seemed to like just go hard. Even on the easy, easy long run days, they'd go hard. But then when we did the hard workouts, we would be able to be in front of everyone because we rested. We allowed ourselves that easy recovery day uh, to rest and recover and then we could do those hard days. So who's winning the races? Her and I would be winning the races because we would have the rest and then we were able to put the hard work in those hard work days. So that rest was really valuable. That those chat, chatty runs and things like that, those are okay to do. I think people have that misconception you have to push every single day. And that's not true. Matter of fact, I uh, there's several reasons I take full rest day every week. I have a Sunday rest day. I don't do any exercise on that day. Maybe I'll walk sometimes, maybe stretch a little bit, but for the most part, I have a rest, a full rest day. The reason I do that is because mentally you need it. Mentally you need a day where you're not pushing yourself, but also my body needs it. I need to allow time for recovery. The best time for those muscles to repair and rebuild are the rest times. Not only sleep at night, but just not utilizing the muscles so heavily all the time. So if you're not uh, you're having a rest day in there, I highly encourage a rest day. Uh, and that keeps you mentally fresh. fresh. You, you don't want to burn out. I think a lot of people get burned out of running to the point where they don't want to do it or triathlon training. Um, if you have kind of a built-in recovery rest, you know, build up day where you can just not have to think about running, then that's good. Plus it makes running a treat. If you're doing it every single day, it's not going to give you kind of that fresh perspective of doing it. So um, other things I want to talk about with recovery or ways to speed up recovery, because it is a limiter. That's pretty much the limiter that even elite athletes um, is having that recovery time shortened. So how can you do it? Um, I always like to uh, integrate the rice theory, I guess, if you want to call it that. Rest, ice, compress, and elevate. Um, so after hard workouts uh, or long workouts, I'll often do what's called an ice bath. Uh, that's It's sort of uncomfortable, but I will tell you 
if you do ice ice baths, how many of you guys do ice baths? Let's see some hearts here. Um, if you do, I think well, they're very valuable, but they're sort of uncomfortable. One thing to do to make them a little more comfortable is to use neoprene booties because I find that my feet are the most uncomfortable and they really don't need the ice on them. That's more for the muscles, not necessarily ligaments. So helps with tendons though. So tendons, of course, connect the bone to the muscle so those it still helps those so um definitely ice baths are really good to do and I just do them you know in college it was great because we could we had these tubs of ice and it would swirl around and we had lots of ice uh, those were really effective very cold at home here I just utilize the ice maker and I keep it in bags in the fridge and bowls and when I need it I use you know, I've kind of save up for those big workouts and fill up the tub. And I actually stir it around with my arm. Uh, that is going to help them. The movement and the cold water uh, will help definitely with your legs there. So ice, icing is a good thing. You can also spot ice. Uh, here's an idea for you. I'm still not seeing the chat, so I'm, I'm working on getting that figured out. Please, again, if you have questions, comments, you can follow me on Twitter. Just message me there, Blonde Runner. Um, you can find my email, my email on my website at blonderunner.com too. So I don't want to miss the chat part. It doesn't look like it's working again. So um, another way though that you can do a, a fast, like an ice massage, is use paper cups and freeze them in, and you can peel off the top and then you want to keep that ice moving. Uh, this, a lot of times knees get a little sore with running, so that's kind of an area you want to focus on when it comes to recovery and, and an ice massage is a good way to do that. Keep the ice moving. You don't want to get frostbite or anything. Um, another good thing for recovery, so of course rest at night is good. Icing is great. Compressing is great. I have a lot of people ask about compression socks, compression sleeves. Do they work? Are they helpful? Absolutely. They help um, keep that blood from pooling in the legs, especially if you have to stand a lot. Maybe if you're a nurse or you have a job where you're standing a lot, compression sleeves are very beneficial for you. A lot of people will use them during races. They're also beneficial during an ice bath to, to help with the swelling. So swelling is a, a concern there. So that definitely helps. Um, and, you know, just wearing them, a lot of times the tights that you wear, you know, if you don't have compression sleeves maybe, Good running tights will compress some. So even after a workout in the summer, come inside, put those compression tights or your tights on, and that will help uh, with swelling, and that will help to speed your recovery. So that's uh, beneficial. Elevation is also great. I am found often on my bed after workouts with my legs up, and I'm working off my phone. It's practically computer nowadays, so that's great. I'm keeping my legs up. I'm going to elevate them keeping that blood from pooling and um, you know, helping with that recovery. Plus it gets to your heart a little easier when it's more, it's closer to your heart. That helps a lot too. Um, so how much, how many maybe easy days should you take a week? You know, I really believe in periodization training. So there are kind of phases of training. It really depends on what phase you're in. Uh, but I do think that it's valuable, like I said, at least to have one day of full rest every week. That's all year, all year round. Um, some weeks I'll even take two days, two rest days. I think part of it, you just have to know where you're at mentally. Do you need that break? Man, I really want a chat here and I'm sorry that it's not working. Again, just tweet me um, if you have questions. I, I will cover those. Um, so one other thing, if you've got, if you're here this morning, that means you probably went to bed early, I hope, and you're able to get up. Maybe some of you have already finished your run this morning. Can I see some hearts for those that have finished their run? Um, or you're about to go on your run, you're just stretching out, seeing what's on the, on the, on the Periscope TV here. But um, definitely, if you're, if you're up and you haven't slept at all, that's a problem too. Insomnia can be a problem for recovery. So listening to your body, you may need to throw an extra rest day in there if you're not getting their sleep at night. And I know sometimes uh, when you have kids or babies and that will affect your sleep. Um, I found for me though, and my kids are getting a little older now, but I found for me when even when my babies and I didn't get very good sleep, I would get up and get my exercise in anyway. I just was more mentally stable. It was good. So getting that rest, you know, I, I made it up with power naps. 
You know, and power naps, if you don't have a lot of time, can be, be very beneficial. I find for me, if I sleep too long, though, I have a hard time getting to sleep at night. So power nap, I'll even set an alarm. It's a you know half hour max, um, and then I'm up. I feel refreshed again. So that's a benefit too. Um, sleep, I just want to remind you, sleep or at night or rest days, those are the days your muscles are repairing. So, so valuable. I see so many people get injured pushing hard every single day, not taking enough rest days. So do allow that rest for recovery. Um, I used to think there wasn't a lot of value in runs that were slow. I thought, oh, if I run slow, I'm going to race slow. I don't want to do that. But especially for long, slow distance runs, um, LSD, that's why they're called long, slow distance runs is they, they are, there are benefits to them. There are things that happen in your, your, your blood volume increases. Once you've been out there like 90 minutes or more, um, your blood volume increases, your, you start developing more capillaries in the, in the tissue, which is really beneficial. And you, you utilize that in racing. So even though the pace is slow, it is still valuable workout because of what you're, you're developing in the muscle tissue. Um, you know, 90 minutes is kind of, kind of the point where I think those things start happening. So if you're not in integrating those longer runs, you really need to, uh, if you're just getting started, you want to build up to that, of course, but definitely getting those in is valuable. Um, another thing I wanted to touch on, and I've got my eat your veggie shirt here, it really should be a hydration shirt because that's what I'm going to touch on. Uh, for rest and recovery, hydration is valuable. Um, if you can hydrate during workouts and immediately after, making sure your hydration is where it needs to be, you're going to really save your muscles from getting damaged. Dehydration can cause damage and tears in the muscles, and that is hard to recover from. So uh, if you want to stay healthy, you need to stay hydrated. I'm a big advocate for cellular hydration. I actually have a good article on my website about cellular hydration and uh, it's really talks about electrolytes as well as water because if you can't utilize the water in the cell it's like a plant not getting the water to the roots so it's really valuable that you get the right proportions that you're able to actually hydrate the, the tissue not just drink water some people drink water too much and they're going to the bathroom the whole time if you're going to the bathroom a lot you're either way drinking way too much or you're not getting enough electrolyte to actually absorb it into the cell so please look that up on my website uh, cellular hydration and you can you can actually on the when you go to my website at blondrunner.com on the top right you can actually plug in cellular hydration it'll bring up that article I also have a nutrition section we'll have everything that I've written on nutrition in that on my blog there so um, I hope you you'll see a lot of value I think in that matter of fact there are so many people that can't finish an Ironman because of the problem with electrolyte imbalance they didn't take their you know they did all their training right their pacing is at adequate their nutrition is good except they didn't take their ta their electrolyte tablets and that's why they couldn't finish the marathon and the Ironman so it has to it, it, it's huge has a huge impact on your hydration levels, having the right electrolytes. So very good for recovery and rest is making sure our nutrition is on point, especially hydration. So um, those are the main things that I wanted to cover. Sorry again about the chat not being working right. Um, thank you for joining in this morning. I really want this to be a little more interactive than just talking to you and I'm going to keep working on it. So uh, if you can tell me how I can fix so chat is not limited, please do because I'm fairly new to Periscope. This is my fourth scope. So just so you know, if you have missed any scopes, I will be putting them on my YouTube channel at The Blonde Runner. So any of my expired past 24 hours, I'll be putting them up there so you can look at those. I also have other videos and tutorials on uh, different educational aspects of a triathlon training and of course uh, nutrition I also put them up of course for running so thanks again for joining me this morning and I hope you have a healthy fantastic day thanks